Yeah, I always try to make it work. Actually, it is because you were talking about getting mad that you're now mad. And um, in class on Monday, Frances, you all know Frances, she's an amazing actress and an incredible teacher. And uh, it was interesting because she's doing this scene that was calling for, the character is um, very opinionated, but also like is really down and dirty with being jealous and competitive and petty. These aren't judgmental words. These are just sort of descriptive <laughs> qualities of where this character wants to go, right? Oh, hi. Sorry, Sophia. Oh, hi, Sophia. Come on in. So, um, so where was I? So, yes. Yeah, so it was, it really was requiring her leveraging, you know, some of those more base elemental qualities that we sometimes like to, I don't know, sidetrack, go around, um, circumvent. And in her talk back, she started talking about how it's very difficult for her in, to, to allow those aspects to be a part of her work and her life because she has so much judgment about it. She even used the word evil. That, and she was giving a, a really interesting example of sometimes when friends have a victory or something, she doesn't always feel as generous as she could. And that's just part of human nature. But she herself feels even more, has a lot of judgment and energy around that. And so we had a great talk back, but then I called her because we're good friends. And Frances is a practicing Buddhist. I don't know if you knew that. And she's really been committed to her practice for a long time. And I, I started talking to her about, here's some of the challenges when you're on a spiritual path, which we all are on, whether we realize it or not. But for those of you who are cognitively making choices to live a more spiritually aware life, doesn't make us better than other people who are unconscious. But it does start to, as you, as you evolve on your journey, you start to have this, um, I don't know, this distinction spiritually that you should be better. You should be a better spiritual person. That connected with this weird phenomena of what we live in nowadays called spiritual bypassing, also known as toxic positivity, can be a double whammy. Yeah, y'all laugh because it's a real thing. These things didn't exist like 15 years ago. And now everybody is like, so, but, but, so what I was talking to her about was as you start to have awareness about your own spiritual challenges and your growth and wanting to be more spiritual, we immediately identify with spiritual means not to be in the elemental aspects of ourselves. But that's absolutely a fiction. That's not true. In fact, it's the more elemental base reactive uh, human parts of you that you wish you didn't have that are the things that that put you on a transformational spiritual journey. And I think there's this, this part of us individually on a spiritual path that starts to condemn ourselves, meaning when we get into a fight or we get triggered or we're not as generous with, with um, you know, a more generous response around something, we then feel like we are, we are really miserable spiritual people. And it's just the opposite. And I want to keep reminding us that to walk a path of anything in life does not mean to separate and compartmentalize the other parts that are necessary. If any of you have practiced Buddhism, you know that one of the images is it's a lotus flower that has emerged out of the mud. <laughs> the mud is a metaphor for the drek and the ick and the blach, which is another way of saying it has flowered because of that. Get rid of the mud, you don't have this beautiful radiating flower. So it's essential. It is part of the transformational aspect of what it means to become spiritual, as opposed to this, this whole phenomenon of spiritual bypassing or toxic positivity, to me they're interchangeable, which is I'm so spiritual, I don't have, I just, I don't get upset. It just doesn't bother me, I'm good. Well, you're human. <laughs> and I think to really face that part of ourselves is really, first of all, the work, because to circumvent it doesn't really, I don't know, it is literally the grist for your transformation. So you can't be without it. And I know it's hard, but you really wanna bless it because that's what really creates you moving in a more evolved way. And certainly in terms of our acting, it's essential because nobody wants to watch somebody having it all together. 
It's just not real. What's real is this complex, actually, you know, the whole thing about spiritual bypassing and, and toxic positivity as well is this, there's no nuance to that because to be a human being is so complex and nuanced and weird and, and uncomfortable at times and full of so many contradictions that when we watch that in acting, it gives ourselves the permission to embrace and be okay with those parts in ourselves, right? Oh, I can be that way. Oh, I can be selfish. Oh, I can be petty. Oh, I can be not generous. And that is also part of a transformational process. That is actually, at a higher level, is what art is about. Art is about awakening these things in ourselves so that we can have a better response or learn how to embrace and understand that that is also needed in the work. So I think it's just a really great reminder, you guys, like we do not want to um, not be complex and weirdly beautifully human that you are. Nobody wants to see that. It's just not real. You all laughed when I said toxic positivity because you know that when we see those kind of profiles, it just is, it feels like you're a, a Stepford wife. You're a zombie. It's not a real person, right? So, okay, does that make sense? I think it's always really great to remember those things. All right, I'm wearing my Everything But The Girl t-shirt. <laughs> Nobody even knows that group. That's from the 90s. Okay, all right.